StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is This Month in German Startups, November 2021 by StartupRate.io. Welcome to This Month in German Startups in November 2021 by StartupRate.io in a news recording with Chris from New York. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Hey, from New York. And of course, me, Joe, from Frankfurt. We recorded this episode on Friday, November 19th due to travel plans of both of us and all the news included here will be public not included will be published in our december news so we keep tracking we keep collecting and the december news actually will go live on december 23rd there will also be our annual fintech review on december 25th and then we will take a break and be back with the interview of an ai startup on january 13th So we take a few weeks off around the holidays. We are not there yet, so let's get started. Today we have eScooter Tears, new funding and acquisition, N26 pulling the block on their US operations already in January 2022, and of course the amazing IPO of Zona Motors on NASDAQ. There are also new unicorns to announce, We proudly present Frankfurt's first unicorn, the Introtech Clark. Also, Razor Group, an Amazon shop buyer, becomes a unicorn with a 125 million US dollar fundraising. And this time in November 2021, there is no unicorn tracker. We will keep our eyes open and maybe in the next news, there will be a unicorn tracker companion. Christian, you know what? I haven't heard any anything from your uh, sirens from your sound bar yet. So, no. well, so I far you owe, owe me a donut for this recording. <laughs> I can hear them in the back. So yeah, um, to start things off, obviously here from the US, Happy Thanksgiving. Things are gearing up for the holiday season. Uh, it's still quite warm, but um, yeah, we will ha- celebrate Thanksgiving and then basically it's uh, time for Christmas and then the New Year's. Um, we uh, are talking a bit about our enablers uh, invest in Hessen. Um, so the whole show, as always, was made possible by Hessen Trade and Invest with their brand Invest in Hessen. Um, you can learn more about them um, at invest dash in dash hessen.com. We also run a dedicated sub podcast with all interviews and news and corp- uh, cooperation with them. Um, the link for that, I mean, it's basically easy. It's anchor.fm slash tech startups Germany. Now that I hear the sirens. Now, since you've spoken about it <laughs> and, um, startup Raven, which is the best way to identify investors and cooperation partners for early stage startups. You can sign up for early, for early access at startupraven.com. And, um, it's the new project of our company, you could say. Um, top news. That was like the little ad break. Top news. Um, you already mentioned it. Tier. Tier raises capital and buys a bicycle rental company. Um, Tier had uh, uh, scoots off with 200 million US dollars, all equity first close of a Series D. Plus, they took over the bike rental service Next Bike, but they did not disclose the price. So they themselves uh, say the combined force of the two companies will create Europe's largest and most diverse micro mobility provider with more than 250,000 vehicles in over 400 cities. Um, so now the whole company is valued at around 1.7 billion euros, close to 2 billion US dollars. We have N26. We've spoken a lot about them, a German um, new bank, which has quite a lot of success, but also is in the headlines quite a lot with um, some growing pains, you could say. And one of them is that they are now pulling the plug on their U.S. operations. Uh, they will stop on January 11th, 2022. 2022. <laughs> so uh, if you ever m- got your bank account, there's not much time to shift your main account. Uh, N26 started in the US in 2019 and now 
only two and a half years later closes its op operations there. Up to you. Back to you. They actually pursue what they call a your first strategy. Let's see how this works out. But my personal feeling is that those neobanks just on apps, um, they have a tough time entering the US market. Um, talking about a better time, we have three new unicorns to announce. Admittedly, Sona Motors is a, is not necessarily a unicorn when you define it as privately held companies with a valuation of above 1 billion US dollars because they just IPO'd on NASDAQ in New York. Chris, did you notice anything of Zono Motors IPO there? Uh, no, but I also was traveling. So, <laughs> um, and of course, clock.de and Razor Group. Let's start out with Sono Motors successful IPO at NASDAQ. Sono Motors, the Munich based solar car company had a great IPO. They offered their shares for 15 US dollar and reached yesterday on first trading a high of almost 39 US dollars. This is all despite delivering their first car only next year. Admittedly, they have 16,000 pre-orders on the books. In total, they will have raised approximately 135 million US dollars at a 2.6 billion US dollar valuation. The two founders, Jonah Christ, Christ, Jonah Christians and Laurin Hahn, Lauren Hahn, I assume, retain the majority of the votes. And of course, very happy to announce that finally, 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 Frankfurt has its first unicorn. Frankfurt based Introtech Clark gets the website Finanzen.de from the venture capital arm of the insurance giant Allianz called Allianz X in an all shares deal. The transaction, and of course, there's also a uh, investment included, uh, values clock at more than 1 billion US dollars, becoming Frankfurt's first unicorn. In exchange, Allianz X becomes the largest minority shareholder. Of course, you can learn more about the complicated transaction and the founder because we interviewed him two times already on our blog post related to that. Go down wherever you're listening to this or watching this. There's a link to our blog post and there you can find the link to this specific blog post as well. There is also a building based Razor Group spelled A, uh, spelled R A Z O R. They are an Amazon shop buyer and they raised 125 million US dollars and cracked the unicorn valuation. <sighs> Ecosystem. Let's talk a little bit the bird's eye view. Um, we have a nice article how data is helping European VCs to find the next hidden gem. And the German Retail Association forecast for Black Friday and Cyber Monday week, 4.9 billion euros revenue in Germany. Let's go to the hops section. And of course, we always start out with Frankfurt. And as always, the order of the news is just the order we found them. Nothing prioritized here. Um, as we said, Clark is Frankfurt's first unicorn and Frankfurt not just a win as cities fight over green finance ground. This is a Frankfurt's chance to become the global center of green finance. They actually get a global headquarter there. You can read more in the Bloomberg article in the show notes. No more paper. Frankfurt based startup paper less has hundreds of clients waiting to be the first customers. They help you get rid of hard copy contracts and documents. Another news from Frankfurt, their Frankfurt based fund of funds. So that means that is a fund that does not directly invest in startups, but in other VC funds has closed its 20 million race for multiple fund two. And as I said, the company is called multiple capital. Bita, B-I-T-A, secures six, six million investment from 
ETFS Capital. Of course, you can learn more about the founder um, in our interview with him. Helen Ventures and Porsche Ventures invest in Frankfurt-based customer loyalty startup and charge like the end sign and charge an undisclosed amount. We will have them in our interview before the January news. It will be published soon. And the last news we have already announced that Fastbill sold itself to Canadian unicorn FreshBooks. Now we have an exclusive interview with Fastbill's founder, of course, again on our blog here. Let's go to my native city, Mainz, which is actually not too far away from Frankfurt. There, the biggest news, of course, is BioNTech, which is headquartered there. First news on BioNTech is the company behind Pfizer's Corona vaccine is building a factory in Africa to produce their vaccine there. And the second news is BioNTech is not only successful as a startup, but the tax revenues fill the coffers of Mines, where they headquartered. Now Mines want to use the money to pay back debt and help to get more biotech startups to the city. Actually, smart idea. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, it's such a it's such a crazy story that the whole city, and it's not a very small city. It is like, I don't know, uh, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of, it's, it's, no, it's even bigger. How many inhabitants does mind? Uh, I, I would, I would say quarter of a million, something like this. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So it's not like a little village that benefits from having one city, one company there, but still bio and tech makes for, um, more than double of the, um, of the taxes than all other, uh, companies combined there. It's crazy. We may but, add, uh, according yeah. to Wikipedia, they have a population of 217,000. So, yeah. So, um, good for them. And they went from, uh, 36 million of a loss, the city euro to 1 billion and 90 million, um, of a net profit in, uh, this year. Would you so, ever have crazy. thought that we discussed finances of a small city here in our startup news? Not of mine. Hmm. I would have guessed um, Heilbronn. Things change. No, I don't know. Yeah. So moving on to Baden-Württemberg, um, right next to rhineland Um there is Tübingen close to Stuttgart, where we have another company that once was a hopeful um company or a pharmaceutical company hoping to deliver a COVID vaccine to the world, CureVac. Um, but they had to trash its first approach for a Corona vaccine. Now they are back with a second attempt and promising data on it. I mean, by now where we look at more than 7 billion shots already in arms, we will see how much um, they can still make a dent in the market. But um at least, yeah, this is something from Tübingen. Then Heidelberg, not that far away from it, uh, to the north of uh, Tübingen, we see the intro tech startup Get Safe, which obtains property insurance, a property insurance license, turning itself from an intro tech to an insurance company. In Hamburg, way up north, NAGA Naga launches stock trading globally and announces its announces its own NFT marketplace. Um, we um, also spoke with them already, which is really crazy, back in 2015 already. Um, Munich, we already spoke about Sono Motors and their hopes for uh, becoming a big car money, uh, car company. But in Munich, we also see that the Spotify co-founder Daniel Eck puts 100 million euros into the Munich-based defense startup Helsing.ai in their Series A funding. So the valuation there is more than 400 million euros to support democracies. Um, UVC Partners raises their third VC fund. Um, among the investors are the founders of the unicorns Flixbus and Celones. Flixbus received investments from UVC early on. Now, Deutsche Startups reports that uh, they raised 255 million euros. The original target was just 150 million. So quite a success there. Cobrainer applies AI to HR and raises 11 million euros as a Series A funding to expand across Europe. 
Deep North, a Redwood City, CA and Munich, German-based AI company transforming video assets into custom tailored analytics, raised $16.7 million in the Series A1 funding. Cleaniserve, a software as a service tool for nursing homes from Munich, raises a seven-digit seed round, as they said. And Munich-based Park Amo closes a 2.1 million euro funding to continue the expansion of its climate compensated parking app. We have news from Stuttgart, my old hometown, where any desk wants to replace TeamViewer. Now they raise 70, 70 million US dollars in venture capital from investors, General Atlantic, Inside Partners, EQ2 Ventures and Possible Ventures. And we take a little look at Austria, where ID Well, the Vienna-based prop tech, raises several million euros venture capital from investors in Gusti, Shazam, or Delivery Hero. And Vienna's tech startup ecosystem gathers momentum, so we have a little overview there. Back to you with some more general news, and um, that's it for the um, hubs section. Yes, talking about an overview, let's get to the general news companies news section. We talked extensively about the Zoo Plus story, Zoo Plus. Um, it's a German online retailer for pet food and pet supplies. The story in short, one private equity company wanted to take them private and made an offer. Then two others were interested in joining the fight. One dropped out. And eventually, uh, Hellman and Friedman, Hellman and Friedman, yes, and EQT decide to work together. Um, on November 3rd, they announced that they have reached the 50%, uh, voting rights at approximately 3.4 billion euros or 4 billion US dollar valuation. Um, here's a little bit of the story on August 13th, Hellman and Friedman made the first offer valuing the company at 2.8 billion, 390 euros a share. Then they increased the offer um, to 460 euros a share. Then EQT topped them with 470 euros a share. Then uh, Hellman and Friedman on October 7th said, okay, we are also uh, offering 470 euros a share. And then they joined forces on October 25th, offering 480 euros a share. And now on November 3rd, they purchased more than 50% of the voting rights shares. Whew, that was a long story. Not that long is our fintech stuff. A German blog looked at through the published PNL and balance sheet of Berlin based fintech unicorn trade republic as of September 30th, 2020. Their revenue grew by 3600%. Their customer acquisition costs are around 40 euros and their revenue per customer is 100 euros. That means they make 60 years out of each new client in already the first year. That may explain their very high valuation. Moonfair, a Berlin-based fintech that allowed its clients to invest in private equity funds, raises 125 million in Series C, led by Insight Partners to accelerate global growth. At an assumed valuation of 500 million euros, they can be seen as a competitor of New York City based startup iCapital Network or Artivest, but iCapital has already raised three times the funding of Moonfair. We will see how far Moonfair gets since the money uh, is for the international expansion. There'll be a battleground opening up in the US, I assume. There is a new move in the hot competition of the neo brokers between Trade Republic, Bitpanda and Scalable. And keep in mind, N26 announced they'll also offer trading of cryptocurrencies and equities in January next year. The Munich based neo broker Scalable Capital buys just ETF, an ETF focused website, most likely to improve their offer there. German's finance oversight body BaFin is surprised by the insurtech hype. 
the seven intratechs in Germany only make up um, 0.02% of all property premiums in the German market. And final news, Solaris Bank, the banking backend of many fintechs and startups is reorganized due to their first international acquisition. Whew, Chris, that wasn't enough boring fintech. What else you got? Um, yeah, so um, we got a couple of more news items to wrap up the show with. First up, um, the SPAC section, where we found a news bit that uh, gives us a hint that they are probably not dead yet. Former German McKinsey CEO Cornelius Bauer keeps pushing his SPAC plans. It will be listed in Amsterdam, looking for targets in healthcare. And now Handelsblatt reports the ex-CEOs from Merck and Quiagen. I'm, yeah, I'm butchering mm -hmm. this. Yin <laughs> are also part of the SPAC team. Um, we found a couple of new noteworthy VC funds. For example, the World Fund just launched Europe's biggest climate tech venture capital fund with 350 million uh, euros. And Balderton Capital announces a 529 euro million euro early stage fund to back Europe's next wave of breakout tech. And then we have some small other news that I'm just going to rush through now. Um, Media Markt Saturn, Seasonomy made one third of profits online. Goldman Sachs owns 17.4% of the German online furniture store Home24. This makes New York based investment bank, the New York based investment bank their largest shareholder. Germany's Sanity Group adds $3.5 million to a Series A. You can learn more about the founder of the Sanity Group in an interview we did. Um, also, please find the link in the show notes. The carbon accounting startup Plan A raises $10 million six months after the seeding round. DN Capital opens a Berlin office. And one in 10 of all new startups in Germany are fintech companies. German logistics startups Hive just raised $34 million from Tiger Global. Um, the firm's unique approach to due diligence won the deal and other VCs are taking note. Y42 raises 27 million euros Series A with lead investors Atomico and Inside Partners and the German online car dealer Auto One, which we spoke often, often about in our show already, raises 2021 targets on strong demand. So congratulations to get that. And to stay ahead of the curve, we just have a couple of new, uh, uh, only two news items about Sequoia Capital and SoftBank, the SoftBank Vision Fund. And I think uh, for now, this is it. We will meet again one time this year, but um, so far I am saying goodbye from sunny, crisp and beautiful New York. Goodbye and happy Thanksgiving, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.